What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 45 of Battle Talk. Or is it 44? I don't remember. That pre-show's got me all over the place. I'm your host, Mike, and uh, we got a lot of Hearthstone and World of Warcraft news this week. But uh, first, joining me, as uh, somewhat usual, are Dom, who is playing Hearthstone on the phone. Oh, did we start? Way to spoil half of our Hearthstone Hearthstone news. Damn it. Uh, did we start the show yet? Mm-hmm. I just got into a game. And? I, I can't cancel. I'm fighting a druid. Are you for real right now? Yeah. I, I, I gotta finish. <sighs> well, while he's doing that, I'm gonna introduce the other host, John! Hi, Mulligan the Sludge Belcher, quick. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing so immediately. Yeah, really that's... quick, Mulligan the Sludge Belcher. Anyway, get rid of that son of a bitch. Hi, what's, Hi. Go, what's new? Uh, my life is vastly improved because Hearthstone's on my goddamn phone. That's sounds... sorry, I buried the lead, but <laughs> that's fine. No, that's great. You know, it's on your phone. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I'm, I need to get, but it on I'm my doing phone. really well. That's awesome. Besides. So, as previously mentioned, gigantic amount. He's still going. Gigantic he's amount. Not done. <laughs> Of news to talk about this week. This is gonna, this is gonna be a doozy. So, World of Warcraft. We're gonna start with that this week. Change of pace because we've been starting with Hearthstone for a few weeks. And I, I started with Hearthstone this week. What do you mean? We're gonna ignore. I don't him know what he's minute. talking about, Dom. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I don't know. Anyway, World of Warcraft, six point two PTR stuff has been data mined. And there's just a lot of junk right now. Now, mind you, everything we're going to talk about for the next half hour to 45 minutes here, this is all to be taken with a grain of salt. It is PTR notes. It is data mined. Half of this crap could be completely irrelevant. It could be wrong, or it could be stuff they scrapped. So with that in mind, let's get right into it. So what's coming in patch 6.2? The Tanan Jungle Zone... Yes, everything. A lots and lots of stuff. The Tanan Jungle Zone, which is the completely locked and invisible force field blocked off zone in Draenor right now. It's where the Dark Portal is. I'm so distracted yep. by his faces. <laughs> You're killing me, you dumb. Uh, you will unlock the zone by accepting a War Council quest at your garrison and building a shipyard, which is the next new thing. Shipyard building in your garrison. Boats. It builds ships and boats. You get parts for ships doing daily quests in Tanan, and there will be naval missions to send followers on sea-based missions. Possibly. Uh, fun stuff. There's a data mine strings of ships being able to be destroyed on missions, so more danger in the missions. There's more info to come. Again, early stuff. Yes, Dom? I didn't know the ships could be destroyed. Me neither, until about an hour ago. The same way this guy just destroyed all my minions on the board. And, yeah. That's just And great. your internet connection destroyed your server, so wow. It destroyed your background. So, more info to come. We don't know if this is ideas that have been, as aforementioned, scrapped, or if this is what's going to actually happen. But there's some pretty fun <clears> stuff. <throat> some titles out of it, some achievements, all kinds of pretty cool stuff. I so, like titles and achievements. Yes, you, you do. There's sailor and captain available. I do. The the whole, the shipyard, it, it actually, I, at first I was thinking, I was like, but we're nowhere near water. And then I was like, wait, yeah. we're <laughs> the water really close behind to water. the entire garrison. Mm -hmm. And I was like, the Alliance, they're by water. So, I guess it makes sense. It's almost as if they, they thought this one out before I was going to say, do you think they were planning on, like, the water thing? I think they were. That's <laughs> possibly why they scrapped the whole put your garrisons wherever you want idea. Yeah. 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 So, do you think they'll use the boats from Warcraft 2? Oh, I hope they do. That That'd be really cool. cool. There's plenty of ship models. I, I hope they come up with some new models for ships, because there's plenty of them in-game right now. Um, yeah. Obvi I I'm hoping we'll get the classic ship designs that you s have seen in Warcraft 2 and that, you know, ferry you to places in Azeroth. But, mm -hmm. um... 
Or, I mean, there was some pretty cool vessels in Warcraft 3's campaign, if I'm not mistaken. So. Goblins even have submarines. Yeah, so I was going to say. Goblin subs. <laughs> and to quote Phaedrus in chat, screw flying, let's go with boats. Let's, yeah. Exactly. Boats always win. So there's going to be uh, no flying this patch, by the way. Is is there going to be a quest involving hose? One would hope. One would hope. It's per, it's possible. And we'll it, it's a quest to go back to uh, Mists of Pandaria to collect the hose from your farm? Correct. Correct. Garden hose. Garden hose. Yes, yeah. I understand. No, All we your got farm it. equipment. Yeah. What else it. would you have been talking about? I'm not... I know. Not, uh, is there another use for that word? Totally not a homophone or anything like that. No. No. Anyway, the... How dare you call me a homophone? I'm very sensitive. Oh, my God. The big draw of this patch is the new raid, which is going to take place in Hellfire Citadel. Where have we seen that before? Places. Oh, my God. Dom, you maniac. Get out of there. What? what? That's a pit lord. It is. That's Mag Faridun he's standing in front ask of. Ask him what to play next. Yeah, ask him what your next move should be. <laughs> well, this guy just put out Kel'Thuzad. So I'm pretty much screwed. You're pretty much screwed. Let us know how that turns out. Anyway, this is going to be a 13 boss raid. And the bosses oh. are going to... Yeah. They're going to include such fun encounters as the Hellfire Assault, which involves shooting cannons at a door. Uh, Kilrog Deadeye in his happily mutated form. Gorfiend, who is big and grotesque and now has a mouth for a stomach. A... a not dead Sakrathar, who we've killed how many times this expansion. A reanimated Manoroth, and the end boss will be Archimond yet again. Gul'dan will make his appearances, but he's not an actual boss. Neither is Grom Hellscream. Hmm. Hmm. Just going to show up and ruin everything again? I guess. I guess, yeah. Um, there's a lot of details out there right now. Uh, they data mined the dungeon journal entries for a lot of these bosses, so you can get an idea of what's going on. Um, there's no word on whether Mythic Arth Archimond will have any extra phase at the end, like um, Mythic Imperator Chogol. did. They yeah. choke all at the end of Mythic Imperator, or anything crazy like that. But if you read the Dungeon Journal notes, it says that the final phase, Archimond tries to destroy Draenor by dropping meteors on it. Sounds, Sounds fun. Sounds legit. Sounds legit. In the Manoroth fight, Gul'dan reanimates him throughout the fight. Which is going to be a hell of a lot of fun. Just to fight the Manoroth again. Just, just to fight Manoroth again. Why not? So what do you guys think? This raid. What you were expecting? Completely off the wall? I did not think Hellfire Citadel was that big. There is that. Two fit 13 bosses. <laughs> it's, well, to be it fair. It is, though. It is if you think about it. It because, is pretty big, though. Uh, when when you think of Hellfire Citadel, you're thinking of Magtheridon, whatever. But it's yeah. actually, it's the entire Citadel. So that includes uh, right. Ramparts. Blood uh, Furnace and Shattered Blood Halls. Blood Furnace. The Furnace, yeah. Shattered Halls. Yeah. And Magtheridon's Lair. So. Yeah, I guess I just like wasn't putting it all together in my brain. I don't mm -hmm. know. But yeah. it just was like, wow, like 13 bosses? That seems like a lot. And this but, is the pre-shattered... Like, it's Tanan Jungle. It's not Hellfire Peninsula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like all wrecked and shit over there. Exactly. Um, but I, I was excited to see Mac Thera uh, Mac Thera Manoroth, because like, he's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they released the uh, models for him, and that is actually something I didn't queue up, but it is a fell-infused manor off green everywhere, stitches holding it together, and he's got a gaping axe wound in the center of his head. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. what from? You winning, Dom? I was just saying, uh, am I winning? Uh, it's I'm at, uh, I'm at 30 health, he's at 20. And I just saw so. flame strike happen. Yeah, I just wiped his board. Good man. So what were you saying so on proud. Hellfire? <laughs> I mean, I, I wasn't exactly... We, we've had this discussion, is Hellfire Citadel even built yet? So it's kind of something we were thinking about. Um, I, I don't know if I could say for sure I was expecting it, but I'm not surprised at the same time. Right. It's possible that they just 
the Hellfire Citadel, it was the Iron Horde's main base, and now that the demons are all over the place, they renamed it. Or it could, could have been be. built this whole time. Maybe it was some ancient fortress that we don't know about. Who knows? Could be a whole lot of things that I haven't gotten into yet. Um, as usual, killing Archimonde on Heroic Plus gets you a feat of strength, just like every other Endwing boss. And on Mythic, he drops the Fell Annihilator mount. It's a Fell Reaver. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen. You, if you ever ride want, one. If you ever wanted to ride around on a Fell Reaver, now's your chance. I, I do. You do. We all do. I want to ride a Yeti. I'll start playing just to ride a Fell Reaver. That would actually be pretty awesome. Um, so there's just so much stuff to go through here, so trying to find something good to talk about. Um, possible data mined class trinkets from the final boss, Archimond, which is an old... When was the last time we had class-specific trinkets? Burning Crusade, am uh, I thinking? I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. Was it that long ago? Was it, I was going to say it CG. Again? Tempest Keep and Serpent Shrine, right? <laughs> yeah. It's been a long time it's since been we had a long class time. only trinkets. Because I remember those. Yeah. And that's pretty surprising. That's really the last ones. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um they're pretty interesting. Uh they're going to change their ability based on your spec, just like so many things do now. And they're pretty good. I mean, it, you could find them all over on Wowhead, they're listed. They don't get hung up on the numbers, they're all pretty, you know. Flexible. Sketchy right now. They're flexible. They've been data mined. I mean, there was one thing, a set bonus it's for war I think de demonology warlocks. It's like while casting soul fire, your uh, demon does five thousand percent more damage. Seems legit. Seems totally legit. Something broken. But I mean, let's go with rogue. Dom plays a rogue. And that's easy. They're all easy to I'm understand. I'm playing a mage right now. Okay, whatever. Like I thought you played floor keeper. Okay. Um, so for Dom, if he gets his class trinket off the last boss and he plays a combat rogue, the trinket, your eviscerate, now hurls a blade at the target with a 20-yard range and deals 27% more damage. So eviscerate becomes a ranged so attack. Backwards. So, so don't. I, I cannot believe this is happening. I'm kind of glad he's doing it, because if he wasn't, I would. I hate both of you. So, what do you think? I... Wait. Oh, uh, uh, oh. Oh. Did I miss? You did. Is this, like, the end? Did Please you... tell me this is the end. Did you win? Yay. Congratulations. Yay. You won. I now, win. I'm the best. On to World of Warcraft, please. I, I'm I'm the wiener. Ah, oh, God. He's, he's going to be doing this during raids now. So, Dom, what do you think of your class trinket if these are indeed the abilities? Your eviscerate becomes a 20-yard range attack and you deal more damage with it. The more damage sounds good. The, the range? I mean, I, I guess it'll help on, on things. I'm not... I, I... I'm not disappointed with it, but I'm not overly thrilled with it at the same time. Because hmm. I'm thinking, it's like, okay, so for applications that I could use now, like currently stuff that I, I would use it for in the game, the only thing that it would really benefit me on is like damaging the turrets on Iron Maidens. I didn't even think about Iron Maidens. That's but about it. You'll be long beyond Maidens. By the I time you get this trinket, but yeah. So I'm saying there will probably be some applications for it where mm -hmm. I could DPS some stuff at ranged, but for the most part, if I have to travel somewhere between sprint and shadow step, and even to a degree killing spree, I can get around pretty quickly. That I don't really worry about ranged attacks. Alrighty then, and. I just chose that as a random one. There are all these abilities up if you're interested in more. Search them up on Wowhead. Uh, search for like 6.2. Just all their 6.2 news. It's all in there. But um, There's a lot of it. There's a lot of it. And there is. We could spend hours covering it. One of the interesting things that they data mined is the possible final legendary ring procs. Now, 
it is possible that these have been scrapped. But the way it worked was... They did say there was a post by them that said the current procs are from an old design. They've reworked it, and they will show up within the next coming weeks. Okay. So the old design, just to give it a quick talk about here, is that... So, for example, for agility users, because we both play agility users, um, your ring would proc, and for 12 seconds, you would gain 10% bonus damage for every agility ring in your raid. Which... If, in our case, that's like six people, so we're doing 60% increased damage. Mm -hmm. After 12 seconds, the buff will pass to another agility ring. So, the so. six agility users get 12 seconds of uptime of 60% bonus damage. It sounded like fun. That, that seems fairly decent. It seemed fairly decent. And people <laughs> posting are like, oh wow, lot small raids get screwed again. Yeah, you know what? You don't get as big of a buff, but you get it more often because there's less people for it to cycle to. Right, and like the bosses are weaker, dummy. Yeah, they don't need as much damage. It's <laughs> better for your raid. Calm your tits. But <laughs> calm your tits. They were interesting okay. designs. That was the same the way intellect and strength worked. The healing one was you gained ten percent bonus healing absorbs and spirit, I believe. And the tank one, you split damage with every other tank ring in the raid. But, I mean, if those have indeed been scrapped, I mean, what do you think? Would those have been appropriate legendary ring procs? Something that affects your whole your group as a whole? I That's think that would be kind cool. of interesting, yeah. It, it brings me back to, like, the days of Thunder Fury. Well, Thunder Fury didn't really yeah. affect your raid, did it? No, it did. The debuff on uh, the, the boss. The debuff would jump to oh, targets. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, it was chain lightning, and it slowed them. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, so... Well, it's like a reverse Thunder Fury. It's like a less selfish legendary, because, like, you know, a lot of the times it's like, well, I get the Warglaive because I'm the bestest rogue, you know. Okay, great. So you get I'm a damage buff, and we all get to watch you have a damage buff. Right. You know, John, I'm the bestest rogue. I, I mean... I get the Warglaive. I know, I know. Yeah, no, you, you do. It's for, I mean, for years it was always legendaries were given to one person. Oh, you wanted Shadowborn? Yeah. Well, guess what? Well, you had to wait. It's It was like the big debate is... Thunder Fury, a tanking weapon or a DPS weapon? The survey says tanking, but you know, yeah, that's what know. the history books will tell you. It least. was also it was also the number one DPS weapon. So it was it was amazing for melee DPS classes. So it was the number one tanking and the number one DPS. It's just what did it benefit more, kind of thing, and it was an endless debate that, depending on who you ask now, is still not solved. Right, exactly. People. We'll hold on to that for a while. We have in chat with Total Deletion saying it's a meh mechanic, lackluster if you don't have a good number of the same main same main stat users. Right, so the question is, I mean, if you're the sole strength user in your raid, does that mean that once it procs you have the ten percent buff for the whole raid? Or does it go away after twelve seconds you gotta wait for it to proc again? Right. Because if I was reading it correctly, that means you're just gonna do ten percent more damage, period. Which just sounds nice. For you. I, I mean, yeah. I, I don't... It's weird. I guess, yeah, you'd have to screw with your composition, but... I don't know. Like, I, I kind of like the idea of like a team benefit from a legendary item. I don't see why they shouldn't stick with that theme, at least. Mm -hmm. So that way it feels like, you know, the whole raid achieves something by getting this ring done, you know? Right. Yeah. I, but at the same time, legendaries have changed so much from, like, when you played, John... Uh, legendaries yeah. now are very solo oriented. Like, yeah, you can do them. Like, it, it's you go on a quest, you get a thing, you go and it's uh, single drops. Like, it, they're raid. Like, they're not one drop, and then you have to divvy them out through the raid. Everybody in the raid gets the same amount, or if they get oh, lucky, so it's they get like more. That. And yes, you do them in raids. However, you could do them in LFR. Yes. So you really okay. don't even need a raid group to do it. Anymore. And it is all the personal loot system, so it's your own independent right. chance to get all the items. It's just a grind. That's all it really is. Okay. Right. So at the same time, really... even though it is kind of a collaborative effort, it's not at the same time. It's really not anymore. Okay. Right. Well, because, you know, like when you were big in like the you know, Sulfuris or like the, the staff from Noxramas, which the name escapes me now. 
Anyway, only it's, one person yeah. was getting it. Yeah. And you all had to work your balls off for that one guy to get it. Yep. So, like, I don't know. It kind of felt like it, it, you know, it wasn't, it was inherently unfair. I mean, it was because only one guy gets it for everyone's work. But, like, at the same time, if it were still like that and you kind of all benefited from it, it'd be really kind of neat. But, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. I agree. And, uh, but the system makes it feel legendary. Right. <laughs> Currently, you know, this ring proc had its problems. We have one of our tanks, Katajara, is saying that you could cheese the tank ring a bit because it gave 10% versatility, which meant tanks did 10% more damage and took 5% less damage Oof. all the time. And, Oof. you know, a, a portion, I like some, I think 10% of the damage they took would be transferred to other rings. And if you had a DPS wearing the armor ring, then the damage reduction on the tank is even greater. And they get bonus uh, healing. Because healing done to the <laughs> tank ring is copied to the other tank rings, too. Right. So, Ooh, that'd be that seemed like, it, you know, hit the design, you know, they were going to implement it, and they're like, now nah, we, we need something better. Something that can't be cheesed. But, again, okay. we'll, like Dom said, they posted that we'll see the actual effect in the coming weeks. Yeah, no... My big thing with this is mm. the, these, the fact that these rings are even in this patch scares the hell out of me. Right. Now, why is that? Because if... So, Miss of Pandaria, which was the, the first time that we got one of these personal legendaries, right? Mm-hmm. When we finally worked through all the tiers and everything to finally get the legendary, it was in the last raid tier. Yeah, the cloak. Because you work through, you got a gem for your weapon, then you got a meta gem for your helmet, then you got a pretty good cloak, and then you got a fucking awesome cloak that is was yeah. still good up until you did a Draenor, a Draenor Heroic at max right. level. So, now we had High Maul slash Blackrock, which was the same tier. Mm-hmm. And now Hellfire is coming out, and we're getting the Legendary Ring. That's leading me to believe that this is the last raid tier. Not the last raid, but the last raid tier of the expansion. You remember we talked wow. about this before BlizzCon. Um, there was the theory that this would only be a two raid tier expansion. It would be the first time. It would be the first time, but they said at BlizzCon that they had streamlined their process, they believed, and they could put out expansions and content at a greater speed. And thus this may mean shorter waits between expansions but also shorter expansions Mm. now I don't know if I like that but they did also say that the ring might not be the only legendary you get this expansion it's true and I mean we don't really know lore wise what's going to happen you could kill Archimond and then what happened to Gul'dan I mean from what I understand from the strings in the game files Manoroth is pretty pissed that Gul'dan resurrects him. <laughs> so, something could go wrong there. And what I about what about Grom Hellscream? You know, the warlord of the, you know, the war chief of the Iron Horde. What about him? I mean, Gul'dan took over, but like uh here here's my thing is they they seem to be tying the expansions together really well now, mm-hmm. right? So, by the end of um Mists, we kind of had a story going of where it was going to go. Like, we. Uh, I know uh, if you guys remember Little Missy, uh, she had an episode of Conspiracy Craft where me and her. I wasn't on the episode, but uh, I was talking with her before this episode went on and, and kind of helped to give her the direction for this. Where we, we came the theory of that the only place for Garage to go after. Um, escaping if he did escape from Siege of Orgamar was to go home and that would be back to Draenor. We didn't factor time travel into it, so we were fifty percent right. He went back right. to Draenor. Um but yeah. So the just the fact that they tied it up and had Garrosh escape and go to Draenor bridge the two expansions, which really hadn't been done before, right? It was just like, oh here's Kalthazad, he's the boss, and then okay, the portal's open, and now you're gonna go to Burning Crusade, and oh look, the Lich King's invading, go to Northrend, and there's no like <laughs> bridge between all of them. It's just like random events that just happen to con- you know line up with each other, and it's just okay, boom. 
but now it seems like they're they're really getting into telling the story and and the uh, the, the the moving over between them. So I'm gonna say, um, what what's his name again? Because I always call him the wrong thing. Who? The last boss supposedly here. Oh, Archimonde. Archimonde. No. Goldan. Goldan. No. The guy that Gromash. Yes, Gromash. Has yeah. Name. Yeah, Gromash. I think he's gonna come back to our timeline. And that's going to lead the next expansion. Well, okay, that's a good one. The running theory from a lot of lore fans was because at the end of Mist of Pandaria, when you finish the legendary quest line, Rathion warns of an imminent threat to Azeroth, and it's very Burning Legion like threat, is what it's looking like. So now, yeah. this last raid is a Burning Legion. I mean,. It More still doesn't answer. Is this alternate timeline Archimond, or is this, you know, you know, it's Arch gotta be resurrected Archimond. No, it's gotta be alternate timeline. Well, there's the theory Archimonde. that demons in this universe never die unless you go to the Twisting Nether and kill them there, because mm. all the Dreadlords come back eventually. Yes. So, but it, that may have just been a thing for Dreadlords. That could be just a thing for Dreadlords. That's true. So, we don't know if this is the Archimonde that was already vanquished, or if this is an alternate timeline Archimonde. And so, what does that mean? Does that mean that alternate timeline Burning Legion invades Azeroth? <laughs> I mean... I, I, I... You could, but I mean, at this point, do you really want to jumble up the fucking time streams that much in your game? Like, how far are you going to go with this? Uh. I mean, the other the other option that we did talk about was alternate Azeroth's timeline. Go, go into that, then. Yeah, I mean, real like they can't just write for the future of the actual world, guys. Like, well, you know what? On. They could, but <laughs> like... but keep this in mind, John. If if we're exploring this, this is huge uh, theory craft here. But if we're exploring the timeline of a different universe. That leads them time to develop a storyline for Warcraft 4 RTS in our timeline. Okay, all right. Boom! Look at that smile oh. on Mike's face. Oh, my God. I'm down to clown with that. <sighs> but you know what? Jake and Ader puts in chat, Archimond is an Eridar slash Jernai, and we had a different Velen in this timeline. So it's probably oh, okay. a different timeline Archimond. Yeah. Okay. That so, seems fair. Seems fair. Go with that. I mean, because yeah. they did... They did go out of their way to mention that there is an alternate Azeroth in this timeline. Yes. So, okay. just the fact that they even mentioned that to begin with already leads me to believe that we're going to see that in some kind of impact. Maybe Arthas will actually be a hero and not a dick, and Uther won't be dead. Well, Arthas is going to be a hero because... Uh, There's uh, no Ner'zhul. Ner'zhul's yeah. dead. That's what I mean. There is like, no Ner'zhul to become the Lich King. I mean, no yeah, scourge, so maybe Arthas no... and Jaina will have many babies together. Oh, God. And live happily ever after. No like fall of Lorder on. No Sylvanas becoming an undead. And Uther isn't dead. And That's Uther important to me. Dead. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's my so, favorite. There would be a lot of cool things that we could see with the timeline. And uh, for all we know, like, I keep going back to this, the world may never have been sundered in the first place. So it may still be one continent. Very true. We don't know. But, um... Which would mean that Illidan could potentially be a good guy as well. We could, yeah, we could sit here and yeah. theorize all night. But we got more stuff to get to. So... Damn it. I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Potential stuff also coming in. Class changes. Aspect of the Fox removed. Amplify Magic removed. I mean... What? what? I know, we just started using these as rotating healing cooldowns. They come in handy... In heroics, quite often. Dom, you seem That's upset. Sad. I am. Why is that? I like these abilities. They're very handy. I like them, especially when I'm healing. I have revival. Amplify magic means it hits. It heals for that much more. If you combine the cooldowns, it's fantastic. Oh, and Windwalker nerfs. Windwalker monks are getting nerfed really, really, really hard. I'm gonna go change classes now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm really not. I put too much work into that monk. But well, monks were kinda of busted for a while, so it's yeah, kind of a long time coming. They're kinda of busted. But 
I'm just gonna keep going through this. There's plenty of buffs, plenty of nerfs all over the place, but again, nothing's final. Apexis Crystal Cap gone. Yeah, uh, which, which is great for that new mount coming out for 150,000 Apexis Crystals. I know, right? Only! Up until this point, you could only have 20,000 at a time. Now, the cap is gone, and they put in a mount that's going to take 150,000 of them. But I it's can't, really cool looking. I can't imagine how long that's going to take to grind that up. From the second the cap is removed, you'll... It's not going to be that long. Oh, okay. You get, you have, because don't forget, if you have, um, if you're full stocked on garrison mi missions, mm -hmm. uh, or resources, rather, you can go buy the Apexis missions you're, for, you're right. okay. for garrison resources. They're like, what, 40? No, they're like 200, 200 resources for 800 Apexis crystals. Very true. You're so. right. Okay, and Phaedrus is telling me he thinks the cap is more than 20k. I thought it started out as 20k, I think. I don't remember. Yeah, I'm not sure. Me neither. Um, but it's a really nice mount. It's a really, really nice mount. Uh, Mythic Dungeons. This is something, if regular viewers of the show will remember, Dom has mentioned this more than once as a 60, feature. 60,000 is the current cap. Okay, 60,000 is the current cap. Dom has mentioned this more than once. That he more would like to once? see this feature. Yeah, in a few Me? episodes. Yeah, I don't mention things more than once. Mythic Dungeons. Really? Something he mentioned. Like, a really, really, really hard five man. And he's getting it. Did you tell this idea to anybody at BlizzCon? Tom really wanted five hard men. Did you, like, walk up to Bashiok and say, Hey, you know what's a great idea? Mythic level dungeons. And no, then I walked up to Bashiok and I was like, Where's your mustache? Oh, yeah, he did do that. Well. Yeah, but no, uh, Awkward. maybe. I don't know. I, I've discussed it with a couple, but... Apparently, someone else had a, the similar idea at yeah. the desert because we're getting it. But, however, you can only complete a Mythic Dungeon once per week. That's completely fine with me. They award eye level 680 gear, which is currently on five eye levels lower than Heroic Blackrock Foundry, and is a chance at getting eye level 700 gear off the final boss of these dungeons, which is equivalent to Mythic Blackrock Foundry. See, I would, I would like mounts to drop in these things, you know, you know, significant maybe one mount per Mythic dungeon on a weekly lockout that that sounds and and do per dungeon like again this is early we could get that i'm just uh, yeah i'm just saying like can you imagine like you even if it's not a mount, put a pet some kind of or cosmetic reward something somewhere in there to to get people to do it like you put a pet in there yeah players foam at the mouth the, the raid so you you're gonna keep doing yeah. it every week to try to get it for people yeah players foam at the mouth for cosmetic rewards all the time so that would be a great thing to put in I'm Would just curious. The filthy casuals. <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious. How hard are they going to actually be? I mean, challenge modes are relatively difficult. Right. The the real real difficult part of challenge modes are the time constraints. Mm -hmm. That's where the hard you know the hard part is because you could figure out how to do it. trash in those challenge mode dungeons suck. Trash is harder than most of the bosses, but you could figure out how to do every trash pack. You could CC it. You, you know you can go through nitpicking it, but doing it in the 13 minute time limit is that's the killer. So uh, my question is really how hard are these mythic dungeons going to be? Are they going to take an hour to do each? I mean are the bosses going to one shot tanks? What are we thinking here? <sighs> they realistically can't one shot tanks but I, no, I yeah. think it's going <laughs> to be along the line of the way challenge modes are and if you if a mechanic goes through that can be interrupted, you're probably going to die to it. And if you get hit by something that can be avoided, you're probably going to die to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seems fair. Seems relatively uh, it's got fair. Like, you know, the downside parts... of this is you're going to outgear it at some point, but keep in mind that this is the last tier, potentially, of of this expansion. So there's there's not a whole lot of room to do it until you level up. Mm -hmm. um, but that's gonna if this is gonna be a, a reoccurring thing that's gonna happen if, if we're gonna get mythic dungeons in the next expansion then by the second raid tier they're gonna be trivial unless they 
scale the dungeons according to our gear or something. Yeah. Which that one, I think they could afford to scale up if they needed to. They, they could. probably could. Um, also being added, and this is something data mined, is a string for Time Walker. Oh, talk and there about was scale. a blog post about this. this is breaking news. So here's some quick details. S being introduced in 6.2, we're going to be seven different weekend events. Two of these events are going to be time walking weekends, in which you'll be able to queue up for a randomly selected old school dungeon in a new sort of heroic difficulty. It's going to drop your gear down and your stats and all that stuff. You're going to be scaled down to appropriate levels, but you're going to keep all of your skills, your level 100 talents, and all that fun stuff. Hmm. Um, so gear drops in the time walked instances will scale up to max level so they'll be useful ish um, and there was a data mine quest that if you complete a time walking quest you will be rewarded with a time twisted anomaly giving you a 690 item so here's a quick short list um, over the coming weeks these are the dungeons they're going to be testing on the PTR in the coming weeks the Architraz Black Morass, Mana Tombs, yeah. Shattered Halls. I don't want to do that ever again. At no. level. No. The Slave Pens, Ankehet, okay. the Old Kingdom, Gundrak, Halls of Lightning, the Nexus, and Utgard Pinnacle. Pretty much every dungeon that they listed are terrible. Some of these were different. Okay, Shattered Halls was, I mean, even it for seasoned and very good players shattered halls Just, was considered a nightmare it was so it was bad doable, but it was just, just annoying fun. it was annoying <laughs> that was it really it was an annoying instance yeah yeah, yeah. i'm okay with the black morass that was when cool. i think of like time walking where i'm excited to go back and do old stuff i think of the vanilla dungeons like, like dead i want to do those i want believe it or not i want to do black fathom deeps on heroic like yeah. Um, or the Sunken Temple. We have some cheers for Halls of Lightning, and we have a fuck Utgard Pinnacle in chat right now. Sounds about right. <laughs> Mostly the Scotty fight. Fuck that fight. But, oh, I, I, I don't know. I love it. It's a cool idea. It's a really cool idea, and I hope they include more dungeons eventually. Oh, yep. They probably will. Um, Some details they released. Uh... Time walking will be available to characters 71 and higher for Burning Crusade content and 81 and higher for Wrath of the Lich King content. And it'll open up only during certain three day long weekend holidays. So that's kind of fun stuff. And they're going to be testing additional rewards, such as a level 100 quest that rewards one seal of tempered fate per weekend, mm. which is your bonus roll thing. Right. So, yeah. That looks like a lot of fun. I mean,. That's some, I would love to go back and do some old content at level with the new skill sets and new talents and everything, but it'd still be a challenge again. Yeah, because I mean, like, with with the um, the boost and stuff, you know, to instant to 90 and, and things like that, you're going to have less and less people running the old stuff, and it seems like at some point it's a waste. Well, yeah, because getting Warlords gives you a boost to 90 now. Right, so yeah. if, if somewhere in there, if, if you can give incentive and a reason to go back and do even if it's you're boosted up down whatever it doesn't really matter incentive to go back and do older dungeons it's still content yeah it is still content yeah i mean and there's some really good dungeons from back in the day can you imagine now this, deserve this to be seen need. mythic time walking dungeons that would be amazing I'm calling it now i Could want you imagine yeah yeah, like a mythic razor friend crawl. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. Oh my god! No, <laughs> Next, we, we need time walking raids too. Ready? On Ready? Those. Mythic shattered halls. I want. I want a mythic time walk. Karazan. Ooh, mythic Karazan yes. would be fun. Karazan was a great dungeon in general. It was a great dungeon. A lot of well designed encounters. I mean, it, it would fit in the mythic theme. Put it because a lockout once a week, like. It, it you, Karzan's not a dungeon you're probably going to finish in one night so it, no. yeah it was I mean it took us a few hours to finish it more than yeah, a few it's hours a, it's, it took a while it's a long night it is a yeah. long night and that was so yeah, even like, if you scaled it down to a five man you know just 
you're not going to finish that in one night. You you could do that across a couple nights. You yeah. most definitely could. And just do it all business casual, like. Mm-hmm. I'm curious what else they'll add because Time Walker Time Walker raids would be fun too. Yeah. I mean, they bumped Molten Core up to level 100 recently, which was one giant clusterfuck of people not knowing the me- proper mechanics. You mean people forgot? No. <laughs> How long has it been since Molten Core? It's been how many years since that was a real well, thing? Dude, a very... I, dude, I could, I could bet you right now I could do the rag fight. That many, hundred percent, like I used to. That right. is so burned into my head. Yes, all of those fights are burned well, into our heads because well, we played in vanilla. He, to a to a degree, John, there may be like one or two important mechanics that slip through your fingers. Uh, for example, when when level forty, they just did level uh, level one hundred. Molten Core 40 man raid for the 10 year mm-hmm. anniversary. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So everything's going through. Everybody, you know, some of the, the mechanics change very, very slightly. Like we had the uh, um, Sulfuron, uh, or no, was it? I don't know. The, the ads, remember that healed? Yes. Yeah. One of those heals went off in original that healed back to full. Uh, yeah. Didn't quite do that in, in this version. However, the one mechanic that did stay the same that I completely forgot about, and it took me three times through Molten Core to remember it was the Sons of Ragnaros reflect damage, the damage you deal yeah. back to you when you hit them. Yeah. Right? <laughs> they do. Right. Now, <laughs> it's been forever since I've done that. Yeah. I don't do Molten Core anymore, and if I do, I kill Rag, like, if I go do it solo, I kill them before the Suns come out. So, I haven't had to deal with Suns in forever. So, when yeah. all the ads would come out, I would... Blade Flurry, Killing Spree, and die. fall to the floor dead. And find the floor. I so, took me three times through Molten Core to remember, <laughs> oh, because right. I'm going through the, the combat log, my death log, and it's not even showing me what I took damage from. That's so funny. So it's like I really had to dig deep and remember some of the mechanics. So, yeah, you're, some fights, whatever, you'll probably remember the majority of them in the major mechanics, but some little things like that, they're going to slip through the cracks. Yeah, like when you're fighting Baron Gedd, make sure you hug up to your party members when you're in the bomb. Hug them with because the bomb. Because you are a good raider. You are a good raider. Actually, you got a share bomb. The mechanic I think that everybody forgot about that probably wasn't in there was Ragnaros' ability, Melt Weapon, that destroyed your durability <laughs> if you hit him. <laughs> was, that, was that? Was that I thought that was... No, that, that was Rag. That was that Rag. Was Rag. The doctor class called it broke the bow. It destroyed... Nefarian did have that too. Yeah, but it made tanking that fight just the worst. I just out of curiosity, I, now that I just ran... So, sorry, we're off on a tangent here, but I know when Death Knights were added to the game, uh, they added a Nefarian class call for Death Knights where he life-gripped the entire raid in front of... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, or death-gripped everybody to Nefarian. Did they do that mm-hmm. for monks? Is, does Nefarian have a monk class call now? I have no idea. I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> I I mean, I doubt they went back and did that. They did for Death Knights. Well, at the point with scaling and everything like that, a monk is going to, like, you go in as Windwalker, you're going to obliterate Nefarian before he even gets to the class call-out part. Probably. Uh, Jake is saying, yeah, something about rolling. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I, I gotta Maybe go back did. and see that. Hmm. Let's go find hmm. Nefarian, guys. So, one of the last little news bits to mention. New Warlock pet models. AKA colors. Yes. Fun stuff. Um, so, as usual, we take a few Twitter questions. I wanted to get on to some of these before I forgot about them, because I do tend to do that. And while we're still on World of Warcraft, I'm going to take the World of Warcraft Twitter questions. So, first off, we have one from Sarah, AKA Wraithfei, and screen got uncentered since I set this up. I don't know how. Thoughts on shipyards, gift bags, and the contents therein? Hmm. Shipyards sound like it's going to be fun. I've been playing the crap out of World of Warships lately, so I mean, I'm all on board with that. Down for the boats. Down for the boats. Boats and hoes. Boats Boats and hoes. Boats and farming equipment. Uh, The gift bags, I think uh, is she related... Is that the BlizzCon gift bag? The BlizzCon? 
Um, the gift bags? The, yeah, sure Sarah, if you're listening, do you mean the fact that you can purchase the goodie bags if you with the virtual ticket? If if so, that's uh that's a pretty nifty little uh thing. I'm curious how much they're gonna be. That too. What is the value of a gift yeah. bag? Because I mean, if you go to BlizzCon, you're paying just get one. You're paying $199 for your ticket to get into the convention for the the two days, and you get it for free. And she says, "Yup" in chat. So for the okay. the virtual ticket, you're paying is it thirty or forty dollars? Forty. So, are they gonna make it like a hundred and fifty dollar goodie bag, or is it gonna be something a little more reasonable? It's gotta be something more reasonable because that would be utterly ridiculous to pay that much for the goodie bag. And yeah, what do you think is gonna be, be in, in them? them? Oh, a Hearthstone nipple clamp, a Blizzard authenticator, a watch. They stopped, but doing- not a working watch. <laughs> Not a working work watch. watch. They stopped doing authenticators a while ago in those. Really? Oh. I, I think it okay. got to the point that there are so <laughs> many people attending that they would run out of authenticators. Well, it's not like that. It's mobile phones. It's on your phone, yeah. Yeah, you can get it on yeah. your phone, too. And it's Can I say? I still the use the one, one on my keychain, though. Me over. The phone one fucked you over. Fucked me over because I got a new phone and the authenticator did not like that I had a new phone and it would just would not sync. I had to, like, call Blizzard and get it removed. It was a pain in the ass. Ew. <laughs> and Jake and Ader says, an Overwatch? Get out. Cleo liked it. <laughs> I love it. And uh, I, yeah, no. an Overwatch. God. I don't know. Probably the usual. Probably a pop figurine or something of the you know yeah. similarity. A plushie. A plushie or, you know. And a, a mount for WoW. Maybe the maybe Card more pins if they're doing their pins again this year. So I forgot they did yeah. their pins last I, year. I'd like, you know the the set that we got the Sylvanas, Lich King, and uh, uh, Kerrigan. Kerrigan, yeah, I'd I'd like something in that format for Overwatch. Well, that would be, be great. Cool. That'd be really cool. Yeah, that'd be really cool. So on to the next question. Cool ideas. I'd love to see it. We'll find out soon. This is from Jake, Jake and Ader, who has another question coming soon. Prediction date for patch release. Blackrock Foundry still seems somewhat fresh to me, so my guess is July or August. Um. Hmm. You know, this is the earliest data mine phase. Like, this is the, hey, we just found this stuff is there. Like, it just went out. And this is the raw, uh, the rawest of the raw data. So it's gonna be a while. How long has it been since we started High Mall? High Mall, we started in January, or yeah, was it the beginning of January? Yes, the beginning of January. July then. Yeah, I was gonna say, don't doesn't Blizzard usually like to have like a summer, summer raid? Or Ish. like a summer patch. Summer. I, I remember that kind of being a thing. I like mean, you'd always get a big patch this, in the summer. This last patch that we got was how long ago? What, 6.1? <clears throat> yeah. It was it like about a month ago or so? July. I don't actually remember. July. Yeah, so I'm going to go with July. I'm going to go with mid end July. I'll say. Probably whatever Tuesday, the third, the third Tuesday in July, which is the 21st. See that? That's a bet. Hold them to it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go with the 14th. Okay. And I'm going to say the patch is going to get delayed for two weeks, so I'm going to go with uh, August 11th. August 11th. Because Blizzard time. I'll go with it. Mm, I'll take that. I'll Yeah, July 21st sounds nice to me. I like it. Yep. I mean, because... So, so think of that, and then... When the patch hits, so let's say it drops in July. Yes. Uh, then August, September would be 6.3. Yeah. And then... If there uh, even is a 6.3. October, yeah. November, December, January. Expect the expansion. 
Well, they did say they wanted it to be about a year between expansions now, if they could pull it off, so. Yeah. That could be something. That could be something. Who knows? I'm curious. I think well, actually, I'd say, I'd say no. I'd say, what, not January. They'll, they'll go for uh, early December, I think, for the expansion. All right. Strike for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, strike Holiday for Christmas. Season. Holiday season. I like it. And so our final WoW-related Twitter question from Phaedrus is, since Gul'dan isn't listed as a boss, do you think he gets away, or will he be betrayed? We know he's involved in the Manoroth fight. And who knows what happens lore-wise. Archimon just goes, suck. Well, I mean, Manoroth eats him. We know from the Dungeon Journal stuff that's out, that's been data-mined, that Archimon tries to destroy Draenor with meteors. So wouldn't it be fun if Gul'dan's like, fuck this, I'm out, opens a whole bunch of portals, and rips the place apart again? Yeah. I, I see Thedris in chat saying, some are wondering if we might get a 6.3, which could be the Fields of Farallon, but no raid tier. Uh, maybe, but I think we're 100% going to get a 6.3, regardless if it has anything to do with a raid or not. It's going to be a mini patch with... Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, what did they give us last time? Sunwell? Uh, so we'll probably see, like... Hellfire Citadel like, nerfs. We'll, we'll probably see pets <laughs> going into, like, the first couple of uh, Wrath of the Lich King raids, with the exception of Nax. Alright. I'll take it. Uh, that, that's what'll be in 6.3. Okay, and probably the Fields of Farallon, if they want to do that, because they said they wanted to do that, this expansion. Yeah. And, um... Maybe a Ruby Sanctum like Ray, and I just see Jake and Andrew now. Ruby Sanctum, maybe a, yeah. a one-off boss or something <clears throat> uh, to lead you into it. Who knows? Could be a whole bunch of stuff. And as far as Gul'dan getting away, I have no idea. I, maybe you'll, he'll kill Manor off, and right before the Archimon fight, Archimon gets fed up with him and just points his finger, and Gul'dan's face explodes. Finger of death. Finger. Why not? Remember, the skull of Gul'dan is an item that uh, Illidan used yes. as a like a power source. So, yep. Archimon's going to point his finger, it's going to blow up, and there'll just be a skull left. He's going to summon Illidan. He's gonna... <laughs> or Manoroth gets Pissy. rageful undead vengeance. I mean, he's powerful. He could probably take on Gul'dan if he's angry enough. I mean, he's so powerful, we watched him die in the opening cinematic for Warlords of Draenor, and he's going to be back. So, yeah. <laughs> and there's even a little kind of quirky thing in uh, the Dungeon Journal, when you look at Manoroth, that said, uh, did you think I died in the opening cinematic? It was only a setback, or something like that. <laughs> hey, the, the advice they give in Archimon's Dungeon Journal is, DPS, do, DP do damage. Healers, heal. Tanks. Take damage. Yeah. Or something along those lines. I hope that's not placeholder. I hope that's like I, I hope that's the final point. product official. Actually yeah. final product. Yeah. 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 So we have one more question on the WoW related subject, and this is a video question from Jake Ganator, which has been a weekly staple ah, staple of our show. I cannot wait to see what he's gonna do this week. It's gonna be a good one. We ask every week, how is he going to top the previous week? I'm curious. Let's We're going to find out Let's right see. now. <laughs> Cutting over to Jake's video question. Look at that video question. How obvious. Hello, Bell Talk. You know who it is. It's Jake and Eater. And I have a question for you guys. With the PTR data mined and a new patch on the horizon, what are you currently most excited about? New raid content, garrison stuff, pets, or otherwise? Personally, I'd like to see how the naval garrison idea turns out with the seemingly new follower system with ships and a shipyard. Anyhow, I'll try to see if I can go undercover and get a sneak peek in Tanan Jungle. <laughs> Wish me luck, guys. I'm out of here. 
that orc disguise is totally gonna work. Totally. Tanan jungle. Here I come. And he's like, Iron Man. What the? Damn you, invisible wall. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jake, for that. I was expecting him to walk into that huge group of orcs dressed as an orc admiral and see, uh, orc pirate and see what happened. Yeah. It um, worked. I think probably the feature I'm going to look the most forward to is time walking. You know, I'm right there with you, actually. It's got so much potential. I don't know if I'd like it in the current iteration, but it's got potential for things. I, we're we're going to have to see what comes out of it. Yeah. Time boats. walking. John says boats. Boats is red. I mean, close second for me is the raid, but, you know, yeah, I, the love, raid. I love raids. I've, I've enjoyed raids since vanilla, so. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with the time walking because it's got a lot of potential and I do like some of those old instances. Doing them at, you know, at level would be fun again. Yeah. So, that's about that for World of Warcraft. There's a lot of junk we covered, a lot of junk we didn't cover. And again, data mining, take it with a grain of salt. Moving mm -hmm. on to the mm -hmm. other big news point is Hearthstone. If you've been watching since the beginning, you know that it's now available for phones. How, how do they know that? Because you played an entire I, damn game while we were talking about WoW. Oh, you we talked that? about WoW at the beginning of the show? Damn it, Dom. I swear to God. Maximum over troll achieved. <laughs> anyway, Hearthstone is now available for phones. It's a wonderful, wonderful way I, to get I just yourself fired. I'm going to cons... I, I, I'm have I'm have real problems <laughs> with my life now. Something. Hmm. When when you play your first game on on the the mobile phone, you you get you get one of these. What's one of these? Yes, card a, pack. A, a card pack. Oh, are we doing a live opening? Is this I think, happening? I think really? we have to. We haven't done we a have live to. opening in. It, a it long only time. seems right. Dom, I'm centering right, on you. Let's see what you get. It's gonna be garbage, but let's just see. Let's see it. Here we go. Crap. That is utter crap. Other way, Dom. Nice job. There you go. Utter crap. Garbage. Oh, that's even worse. At least the Acolyte's playable. And garbage. Torn Warrior. And you missed one. There you go. He, Jungle Panther's he, he garbage. He always does the rare one last. And Perdition's Blade. No one uses that. I, so I have all these cards ready. This is garbage. We. Shunk. <laughs> The man did say it was going to be all junk. It always is. Classic packs are just a cruel mistress. Congratulations, you got a free five pieces of junk. You got twenty. You got 40 dust, so just take it and run with it. <laughs> I'll take it. Anyway, moving on. The usual monthly reminder, weekly reminder, reminder of reminding... Rank 20, get that card before end get of the month. Get your fucking Pop-Tarts. Get your fucking Pop-Tarts. I'm really hungry now. <laughs> damn straight. You know what, Jake's right. You got Arcane Dust out of the deal. Congratulations. You got 40 Arcane Dust. There you go. There you go. So that's that. Uh, last couple weeks, we've been going over the Black Rock Mountain adventures uh, as they've been coming out one by one. Last week was Molten Core. This week is going to be Black Rock Spire. And it's just, it gets better every week. It, it really does. It really does. I mean, all the bosses are clever. Some of the cards are interesting, and it's great. So before I over, you know, sell it, here we go. Well, last week, I finished all those on Heroic. If you, if you guys need the uh, any videos, I have all the videos up on YouTube. Um the one that actually was the hardest was uh, Baron Yedden. Yep. We theorized that, right? Yeah. We did say that, you know, the Ignite Mana would make him a bitch. Mm -hmm. I was honestly surprised how much of a joke Gar was. Really? Even with his increased health? Gar was a joke. Gar was a joke. <laughs> he really was a joke. Oh, wait, yeah, I watched I, it. I watched you when you fought Gar. He was kind of simple. Yeah, I, I I think my video on it was maybe ten minutes. I think I did it in two tries. Just 
use a warrior, get frothing berserkers out, and you win. Yes, yeah. that's really all you had to do. Well, that's what we thought. I didn't. I didn't use frothing berserkers. I used grim patrons. Oh, even better. We said you were there gonna. You go. do, didn't we say that live? That's what you were gonna do. It worked. Or that would be a great idea. It worked. I saw him do it. <laughs> it worked. It was it's a clever idea. actually watching you live. Mm -hmm. He keeps doing damage, so do things that get buff from damage. So, starting off, we yeah. have Omak. High Lord Omak is an ogre boss from Lower Blackrock Spire, if anybody ever truly remembers. Um, he's a fun type, and his ability is called Me Smash. How original. And it is a hero power to destroy a random enemy minion. That's no fun. That's not. That could be great, or it could be horrible. I mean, take your pick. Just use Death Rattle a lot. Use a lot of Death Rattles. Yeah. Just, just coin out an Aruby, and you'd be like, suck it. I don't know. It's it's going to be a tricky. Uh, it's going to be a tricky fight. You, know, mm -hmm. you really can't play a slow deck against him, or you're not going to make it. No, you're not. I mean, that costs. I feel like Paladins might be good because they can just summon chumps all day and ruin lives. Exactly, ruin lives. All those little recruits. Anyway, yeah, it seems like Paladins could probably going to be the the quick. Uh, you're you're going to want some kind of rush deck, something that's going to make a lot of tokens. So either Paladin or like. You, you maybe a warlock with like imp explosions. Yeah, no, or so even the new imp, imp gang boss might be yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, one of those two, I think, is is token. Yeah, yeah. To uh, yeah, totems. Yeah, Jake's got a good point. Shaman totems. Shaman to Yeah. All right, that's pretty good. So right. any kind of tokeny class will we'll do fine. My yeah. chat broke. But anyway, moving on. Hey. When you defeat High Lord Omak, you will be rewarded with. The Core Rager. A 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. And if your hand is empty, gain 3-3. Three, three. So See, I was upset at first when I was like, oh, the Core Rager, that sounds like we should get that card in the Molten Core wing. <laughs> but then I was like, you know what? The Beast was in Upper Blackrock, so... Yeah. He was a Core Rager. Exactly. I'll allow yeah. it. I'll allow it. And, I mean, if you have an empty hand... I, I, I mean, if this is the only card in your hand and you play it 4 mana for a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, I don't. That's it. I don't get it. I mean, why? Did, why? <laughs> the card itself. I mean, at any other day of the week, four mana for a seven-seven is great value. It's just such a but, shit card. Yes, because it's where's it gonna fit in? <laughs> okay, first off, you're a hunter, right? Yeah, you're a Most hunter. Most hunters it are playing hunter face card. hunter. Most, most hunters are playing face hunter. They don't even play four drops. I mean, they they really don't. And this is not one of them that you're going to play because it's so situ. A four four for four is garbage. Yes, it's Crap. not going to get you. It's it's garbage. It doesn't trade well with anything at the four drop slot. I mean, even a chill wind yeti that no one uses anymore is better than that. The chances of you having that in an empty hand. It, I mean, it's. I don't know what they were thinking. I really don't. <laughs> and now this is the thing. So the fact that they're adding new beasts to the game means more stuff can come out of Web Spinner. And like mm. this is a really crappy beast, so it kind of like made Web Spinner slightly worse, which I think is funny. So <laughs> I'm curious. Shadow nerfs. Maybe yeah, some I mean, uh, And the same token though, it, it's not in, it's not awful. I mean it, it's not good, but like, in those situations, if you, you get a web spinner and you, you draw it late game and your hand is pretty much empty and you draw that and you're like, well, fuck. And then you get yeah. this back. It's not the worst in the world. It's I, definitely not the best, but I could think of yeah. worse cards. Than, oh, than God, yeah. Yeah. They're coming up soon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think the best way to play this is off if you get it off a web spinner. <laughs> so you're not wasting a deck slot on it. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. So All right. There's your there's your silver lining. Silver lining. Achieved. Moving on. Oh he didn't go away. General Dracoseth. The final boss, for those who remember, of Upper Blackrock Spire. Uh he's got fifty health. He's up there. And Drac's ability is intense gaze. 
This is a passive hero power. All cards cost one. You are, camp you are capped at two mana crystals and opponent at one. That's actually the heroic ability. Oh, that's the heroic um, one. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the heroic. The normal ability is just uh, you each have one mana crystal. In the heroic, he gets two, you get one. Okay. So you each have one mana crystal, and everything costs one. Yeah. So you're playing one card a turn, unless you have another all, way of reducing all, its cost. All bombs. Just all bombs in your deck. Just everything huge. Everything <laughs> huge. Anything that creates an additional token is going to be... Really good. So, like, like the the Murloc cards. You know, even though they're low, you know, that that's probably the worst example you could use. But like the so that Silverhand Knight that I just opened. Hey, yeah, you know, I was about to say that he'll be good. Um, Doctor Boom. Doctor Boom will be pretty okay. He's an okay card. He's an okay card. Doctor Boom. Slightly. Doctor yeah. Boom will be good. When is he? Ha uh. Kelthuzad will be Shutting silly. Kelthuzad will be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. No, it. Hey, a molten giant would be silly. I mean, turn I, one. Yeah, why just, not? Hey, I'm gonna have a turn, yeah, one, turn molten one molten giant. Punch. It's gonna cost one. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't even be against putting Deathwing in the deck. Screw it. Why not? Yeah, because why the fuck not? If you get overwhelmed, then you drop Deathwing and it evens the board out. Right. That would be great for the heroic fight when he gets two and you get one, because he yeah. is gonna overwhelm you on the heroic fight. If you if you happen to have a Dixia. Sup. <laughs> yeah, just use yeah. In, in insane, insane and crazy. And the uh, chat says just use all huge cards, seven plus. Yep, that's it. That's how you win. There you go. And when you do beat him, you will get the Dragon Consort, which is a five mana five five battle cry. The next dragon you play costs two mana less. And it's Paladin only, suckers. It is yep. Paladin only. It's it's a pretty good card. It's more than pretty good. Pretty because good. The, sti the stipulation... <laughs> the next dragon you play right. costs two less, which means you don't need it to be in your hand. It's just the next one that you play in the game. Yep. It, yes, this is you play this turn five. It could be turn 12 when you play this dragon. Now, now my question is, does this stack? Ooh, I don't know. That is a but, really good question. But this so, is... A, well, it, it couldn't because... No, it he's would right. drop the cost of the next dragon cons uh, the next dragon consort, so it wouldn't matter. So the dragon uh, consort would be three mana. It would be three, which would which then is still drop. good. <laughs> yeah, three mana for a five five. No one's gonna complain. Yeah. So this is the reason now people are saying, and this is absolutely true in my opinion, paladins are gonna be the go to dragon class because of this this card okay. alone. They're gonna be the best with dragons just because. And pair that with Bolvar. Right. I mean, you could do so many things with just the Dragon Consort. Like, you can drop Ysera and still have mana open for the rest of your turn. Ooh. You can... I mean, the possibilities with this card are insane. So a game so, changer for the Paladin, basically. That's what we're I think at. <laughs> Dragon so what Paladin you're saying is going to be a This thing. card is basically a power bomb, courtesy of Captain Insano. You are correct. Captain Insano shows no mercy. <laughs> the movie quotes for movies that I haven't seen in many, many years. <laughs> uh, oh, got, damn it, Jake. Yo, Jake, too, so too soon for Jake here. Bolvar got burned bad by dragons. He isn't on good terms since they toasted him. <laughs> That's, that that was my, my attempt yes. at a joke of adding Bolvar to the deck. Oh my God. Yes. I so, it. that's a great card. I that card. I, actually, I can't wait to see what Paladins do with that. I'm... I'm more of the watch Hearthstone than play it, but like look Josh out for Dragon Paladin because he knows that he could never play Hearthstone as good as I can, and I'm not the best Hearthstone player by any means. I'm not the best card game player Dude, of games that's of this bullshit. type. What? If if you used to be great at the Pokemon card game, if and, Trump uh, if Trump built a deck for me and like a, a legit deck that he could beat people with, and mm -hmm. then. I got matched up against Trump. He would trump me every time. I'm done. Yeah, he's, you'd be right. Insane. You have to get to rank one first. So yeah. insane and crazy's got he's, another good point. You star son, and then drop this card next turn. I know it's just gonna get ridiculous. Like you could drop Chromagus early, and that's coming out next week, and that's 
freaking insane. This card is insanely good. A preview to because that. Because it, it yeah. doesn't matter when you get this card. It's going to be great. And a 5-mana and, and a 5-5 five 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 is okay because that's that's basically Lothep. Yeah. Without the, with a different battle cry. But, different battle cry? I mean, 5-5 five five for 5 is not bad value. Mm-mm. It trades really well with what people are playing right now. So even the body is great. Body with a great effect. I like it. So moving on, and this is going to take a while. I apologize. (laughs) Rend Blackhand. Blizzard! Rend Blackhand, the final boss of this wing. If those remember him, he was the boss that... I think he was the second or third boss of Upper Blackrock. I forget. He's the one with the dragon. And you fight, you jump down to the arena. Anyway. And now for the clusterfuck. <sighs> Rend has four <laughs> abilities. Four? That cycle. Because, as you will see at the end of this ability. Rend ability one. Two mana. Open the gates. Summon three two two whelps. Get a new hero power. All of his hero powers have that little disclaimer at the end. That little flavor add-on. I don't know what to call it. Are they 2-2 two, two on normal? Um, I th- yeah. No. They're one- that's the heroic version. One ones. Here is the normal version. They're 1-1s. One yep. Yep. Three 1-1 one, one whelps. That's, that's doable. That's doable. So he's going to yeah. flood, flood you with whelps. I mean, they're going to be annoying. Yes. That's really the, the most I could say about them is they're going to be a thorn in your side. Yes. For a little bit. <laughs> Moving on, Rend Ability 2, and I don't know if they come in any specific order, is Dismount. Summon Gith, get a new hero power. And this is what happens during the fight. Here's Gith. He is an 8-4 dragon. I don't know if he's 8-4 on normal. I, I, I think yeah, he's like he 5-4, is. He's, is a, he? he's an 8-8 eight, eight on heroic. 8-8 oh, okay. eight, eight on heroic. Holy yeah. Man. That is a pretty crazy good card right there. And if you somehow put it back in his hand, it only costs three mana to put it back out. Don't sap it. <laughs> don't sap it. Don't do it. It's like, no. Don't, don't vanish it either. Don't sap me, bro. And guess what? You get a new hero power, which could possibly be Blackwing. Hero power, summon a 5-4 Dragonkin. I believe this is the heroic version. I'm correct. Here's the normal version. It's 3-1. Which is a little easier to deal with. So I'm going to be playing Mage. Bit easier I was going to say, with. Mage is the shoe in here. <laughs> a wee bit easier to deal with. Yeah, that's another one. And guess what? At the end of that... There's another one. He gets a new hero power. No. The last one is Old Horde. Summon two 2-2 two, two orcs with taunt, which I believe is the heroic one. Yes, because there yeah. we go. It's a 1-1 one, one with one, taunt. And if you Mage. happen to... And if you sap and it goes, it's one mana to replay it. Oh, and by the way, you get a new hero power so he can get any of the other ones back. Yeah. Ugly fight, man. So I don't I know can... if they're on a cycle or if it's just completely random. Right, that's what yeah. we have unconfirmed right now. That's what we don't know. Maybe and someone who knows more about Hearthstone can I'm tell us. I am going to assume the Gith one can only be brought up once. Yay! Yeah, hope it also so. costs him four. Yes. So you know he's not. He'll his hopefully his turn will be limited in the, what he plays from his hand. Right. On top of Gith. That's very. But true. like it's Gith is his mount, so like probably you're right. Like how many times does he get off of Gith? Exactly. Right. Yeah, because that was the. Fight. <laughs> I mean, it's a legendary, so Gith is an actual legendary card. So I'm gonna assume that that's only gonna be seen once For in one phase. Time. We'll take yeah. A safe it's probably the, the 50 mark or something, you know, the, the, half yeah. of the fight mark. Hopefully. So, I mean, my inkling is probably Wild Pyromancer uh, is going to be really good in this fight because there's a lot of one toughness dudes, mm-hmm. or one health dudes. Um, so I can see so, a Priest you know, being really good too. Priest will be good. You know, how can I sell Priest? will be really helpful. Like you said, Mage will be fine. More than fine. <laughs> yeah, Mage. Uh, you see... Even with the the priest, you do the uh, the Akanai Soul Priest Circle of Healing, or you do the uh, um, the Wild Pyromancer with Circle of Healing kind of thing, you know. And anything, yeah. yeah. I mean, 
I th- maybe even warriors. You know, they have a lot of whirlwind effects. Death, death fight, whirlwind itself. They can maybe get away with it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of ways around it. You know, one health isn't too hard to deal with. It's just you know finding the right class to deal right. one damage efficiently. So, with the exception so. of Gith, a lot of one health minions. Right. That'll be a pain. For normal mode. Heroic is a... Heroic's a different defense. beast, because, you know, you got a two twos. No, That's why I'm thinking priests, because yeah. priests happen to have, you know, Holy Nova and... Yeah. You know. I like it. So... Um, you don't need, like, another card to buff things, like, you know, the uh, kobolds or whatever to buff, like, Arcane Explosion. You don't have to worry about that. Priest just gets it straight up. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you this. This was so complicated and annoying of a fight to put together that I didn't put his reward in <laughs> oh. to queue up here, but I have it what right do, What here. do we get for a reward? For defeating Rend, we you get, get the dragon egg. A one mana, mm. zero two, that whenever this minion takes damage, summon a two one whelp. Mm. So, I mean, we've known that was coming. Yeah, it yeah. seems like a good, uh, like, paladin card. Yeah, I mean, it's it could feasibly just be the one drop in dragon decks. I don't see why not. It's not terrible. It's well, not yeah. like the it's not the best uh, card, but I, I don't I don't see why it won't see any use. I, I could definitely see it being used in like uh, maybe even aggressive warlock decks. A one drop that you know, gives you a one drop that could feasibly give you at least a one two one. Yeah, it's I'm gonna. Thinking... De- I'm thinking Paladin because you could just buff it with stuff and then it's attacking and then it's going to have to be dealt with and you, you give it the... Or even Druid, you give it, you know, the uh, Mark of the Wild, you know? And mm-hmm. You could, I could see that. Spitting out cards for you now. And that, yeah, you... Any deck that is comfortable with the Rubian Eggs, I think is going to be okay with Dragon Eggs as well. Yeah. And it just Anything that, like Dragon, so... World, yeah, Whirlwind, like uh, Draven said, or... Um, the problem with Whirlwind even abusive is Sarge. it's going to kill off what it summons. Is that how it triggers? Oh, well, that's right, yeah. It would take damage. Oh, no, no, no. I think the world would resolve first. Well, kill off any other ones that you have out already. Right. So yeah, the world yeah. The first summon. Yeah. But, like, Abusive Sergeant to just buff it to give it attack power, run it into something, you know. You can pull all your old Caribbean Night tricks yeah. Yeah. with it. It's not, like, amazing, but it's, it, I think it'll see use. It'll see, I'm going to yeah. try it. Like you said, pull all the old new Caribbean Egg tricks, and, hey, you got a dragon to synergize with all your new dragon cards. Mm-hmm. There you go. Exactly. So, that's that for the actual wing stuff. I lied, actually. You did lie. Because did. when... Because we have a legendary to talk about, sir. Yes, we did. Another card I forgot to put in due to the just overwhelming Million things, things that is Rend, Rend Blackhand. <laughs> that asshole. The card you win for complete... Hashtag blame Rend. Hashtag blame Rend. I do it. <laughs> for the entire wing is Rend himself. Rend Blackhand. This was a card that was talked about a bit, I've seen, you know, mm-hmm. in the waves there. He's a 7 mana, 8 4. With Battle Cry, if you're holding a dragon, destroy a legendary minion. Now, it's a- basically a super powered Black Knight, <clears throat> kind of. Or like a better big game hunter. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it just now it says destroy a legendary minion, so that just means any legendary minion that's out, right? So Correct. best value would to be to use it on Lore Walker Cho or Blood Mage Thanos. Yeah, yeah, that's value right there. Best value. I agree. Don't hold it and use it on Deathwing. No, or Chromagus when it comes out, or anyone <laughs> relevant. Boom Actually, don't use it on Sylvanas because you're going to hate your <laughs> yeah, life. Don't use it, don't use it on Sylvanas. <laughs> the one non-sarcastic answer you're getting. Don't use don't it on Sylvanas. Actu- actually, don't do that. You'll be really sad. Because um, you will be giving them Rend instead of Sylvanas. Hey, did you want an 8 attack minion instead of a 5? Sure, here. Yeah. I think, like... Um, I mean, the only reason that you would ever feasibly do that is if you're also holding a flame strike in your hand and have enough health to eat eight damage the next turn. Right. Yeah. See, all right. So this guy, this guy right here, is going to be very dependent on the metagame. So, like, what people are playing. Mm. Um, probably th- there's going to be a lot more legendaries in the game that people are going to have. And, and, yeah. and, um, it could feasibly see some use in, like, a, in a dragon deck. And PPS. 
I mean, the top end of decks is a lot of legendaries now. Like even they my really own are. Paladin deck. It's almost impossible whole... to find a deck that is not using Lothab. Yeah, yeah. I mean, popular. my whole six and up in my Paladin deck is like legendaries now. Like you can't get away from it. So, Rend, people were shitting on him because he only has four health. So obviously, no, he doesn't trade well. But I, I don't know. He might actually be really, really good. Just to, I mean, again, depending on the meta, depends on what people are running. If people are running, like you know. It's not unheard of to see six or so legendaries in a deck now. Sometimes, mm -hmm. like yeah. it can happen. No, well, he's got a lot of targets. A lot of interesting legendaries. I had, I know I mentioned this to you guys before the show, but this whole you know adventure has added some very interesting legendaries. I mean, we mentioned Chromagus, and we're going to cover this big time next week. But you know, that's another big crazy effect on a card. <clears throat> you know, Emperor Tharasan was as people. You know, some people were saying this is now the best card in the game. Period. I'm not wrong. <laughs> I can see their point of view. <laughs> I still don't think it's the best card in the game, but it, it's not. But it's still really. It's. Good. it's I, a I top don't think it outdoes Doctor Boom. No. <laughs> it's a good alternative. Maybe. Yeah. It's, it's a good, free alternative. Yeah. It's yeah. You don't have to craft it. So that's the wing right there. Uh, as previously stated, lots of fun stuff coming. Um, and also two more class challenges going in. Yay! Um, so fun. This week is the Druid and the Priest. For Yay. completing the Druid class challenge, or you know, just doing it, you get two Volcanic Lumberers. A tree that is on fire. It is a tree that's on fire. This is a 9 mana cost 7-8 with Taunt. That costs one less for each minion that died this turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at, at first it looks like a much worse tree. Because <laughs> you get the, the what's the right, I don't even remember what they're called, but they're an 8 mana 8-8. Eight, oh, eight. the Iron, Iron Bark, Bark. Protector. Iron yeah. Bark, yeah. Yeah, 8 mana 8-8, eight, eight, and I'm I, when I first saw this, I was like, wait, 9 mana 7-8? What? And then I was like, oh. Well, you know what? <laughs> Ew, because you pair it with like, let's say the, let's say for whatever reason the the enemy is running like a Murloc deck, swipe and uh, they they haven't yet buffed the health and all they have are a bunch of one health manas tokens out and their deck is full or they drop the Nixia the turn before or something like that and you just happen to have a swipe in your hand as well. Yeah. Damn, swipe it, cheap seven eight taunt. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the the lowest you can, the the best case scenario is they have seven one one you know one health things on the board. You swipe it. You can play this turn. You can drop it turn six, and have like you know swipe and then this to follow up. That's like your best case scenario. Or yeah. yes, one ones. Or I mean, you have Thorison out on the field already, and he's already been reducing shit. But I mean, this is you know, like we're talking. Goldilocks it's like scenarios ideal scenario. Yeah, we are talking the bad perfect cool Christmas land. Yeah, magical yeah, it, Christmas it, land RNG. In, in happily prayer land, it's it's great, but in practicality, you, you probably want Ancient of War over this. It's a five ten with taunt. It dodges big game hunter. This doesn't. Um, that costs eight, seven. No, ancients are seven mana. Yeah, they're seven mana. So, I I, I don't know. I don't know about this one. Like you said, you know, if you get that bitch and swipe turn. Yeah, it could be cool, but I, I just can't I, wait I think, for this to show up in my my mage portals. I mean, that would be pretty funny, <laughs> actually. That'd be amazing. Just flame strike and suck. Tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could work. Um, oh, someone's saying in chat if you use force of force of nature and maybe play but a card. The trees the don't die till the end of the the trends don't die till the end of the turn, so you wouldn't get to get the dropped cost, unless you've traded them all. Yeah, I was going to say you really, trade them, but... But you don't really want to be doing that with your Force of Nature mm -hmm. most of the time. Like, if yeah, you're doing well, that, you're probably behind. Yeah, well, th yeah, that's... I don't know. Because, don't forget, you could trade off all your minions, too. Right. And then drop this for next to nothing. You yeah. trade off. You trade off three minions, they all get, you know, their maximum trade out of the deal, and six minions are dead. Now you got a three mana... 
but okay. the other thing is like that is true, but it's also a nine mana card if it doesn't work out. Right, <laughs> you know? exactly. You're right. Future all this at the wrong like because like at that point you kind of want like you'd rather have scenarios than this, you know, or you'd rather have one of your ancients than this. It's just it, it's shaky. So it seems to me that this card, uh, this challenge is going to be in the boss fight in which it destroys a random enemy minion. That may be true. <laughs> there you go. That may very well be true. All right, so uh, that's the druid card that you get for the challenge. Moving on mm. to the priest card. The Twilight Whelp. A one mana card that is a 2-1. And a lovely battle cry. If you're holding a dragon, gain two health. I like it. What a way to tell your opponent you're holding a dragon. Hey. <laughs> Blizzard. Blizzard, we need to talk. We need to have a real... We're going we're gonna to have a real talk right now. You released this card already. It's called a zombie chow. Is but it? Here's the thing. Zombie chow is a two, three for one. And when it dies, it gives your opponent five life. But that's okay for a priest, because priests have alchemy soul priests. So that turns into five fucking damage instead of healing. Why? <laughs> Why did you make a worse zombie chow? Why do you hate priests? Because this is the dragon-themed adventure, John. Just, it's a dragon. It synergizes, man. Would, would you be okay if this was a paladin card? He still wouldn't mm -mm. be. No. Come on. I for, would still run Zombie Chow. Look, for all I would of those still run Zombie Chow. For all of those priest dragon decks that have yet to come out. I'm I'm going to laugh, John, when this amazing priest deck gets built around it's gonna be... and you're going to be like, "Oh. Well, shit." All right, you know what? When that happens, I am willing I am more than willing to be proven wrong about this. Please, if anyone can come up with a deck to make this son of a bitch work, please prove me wrong. I would love for it to be a great card. I really would. Challenge accepted. It's possible. Do it. I we'll I would be honestly. I mean, I'm, and this is like real. Like priests haven't gotten a lot of good good stuff lately. Yeah. I mean, they kind of need help. They're. I mean, they're not as un underplayed as shaman right now, but they need help. You know, they need help. And this isn't hep. This isn't hep. It's cute. The artwork's adorable. Yeah. So So yeah. that is this week for Black Rock Mountain. Um next week is going to be uh, Blackwing Lair. With some Blackwing lovely, Lair. Blackwing Lair with some lovely bosses. And the final wing is going to be the Hidden Laboratory, also known as Blackwing Descent. Mm-hmm. And Lots of fun stuff coming. Chromagus next week. That's going to be a good one to talk about. Can I pose a very quick question? Sure. So, so far in the Black Rock Mountain adventure, Nefarian's been guiding us to destroy Ragnaros for him, right? Pretty much. So how do you think the story changes now that we're kind of invading his territory? You know? I'm just uh, kind of curious, like, what, what's it going to be? He's like, wait, what are you doing? Stop it. <laughs> but it's going to be, I just think it'll be funny. Because the shoe will be very much on the other foot. There will be, yeah. Yeah, just uh, very curious about I, the writing so far. It, of course, between Noxramus and this has been wonderful and funny. So, yes, I hopefully, hope, I hope Ragnaros grows legs. Oh God! <laughs> and yeah, then comes out and kicks Nefarian in the face and the mouth. Kicks him in the teeth. <laughs> so, um, we have one Hearthstone related Twitter question. And we're going to get to that before we, you know, I guess close out. I don't know. We'll see. From Thedris, with Hearthstone on phones, does this mean that Zista will play it on his phone instead during raids? Well, I think we have our answer. He already played a match in the middle of this of I, I battle talk. may so. or may not be doing so again. I, I didn't hear the question. What was the question? Nothing, Dom. Nothing at all. Nothing, sweetie. You just keep being you. Keep being you. Exactly. And that, I believe, concludes our list of Twitter questions. Double checking. Yes, it does. Um, for future reference, if you ever want to submit a question to us, you just uh, tweet us using the hashtag BlizzardBT, and we will see it. 
or you can send myself or Dom or John a private message on Twitter with uh, a video question. That's what Jake does every week. Or submit one in chat. I don't care. We answer all these questions. Pretty but much. I believe that pretty much covers everything. Uh, we're in our Hearthstone podcast that we do. Um, Hearthstone, Hearthstone podcast. Overwatch. Overwatch. God damn it. So much Hearthstone, and I'm actually excited about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Overwatch Observers podcast is going to be skipped this week due to the overwhelming amount of other stuff. So much things. We will be back next week with Overwatch, don't you worry. Um, Jake and Ada yeah. wants to know when we'll be able to call again. Maybe. Maybe quite possibly episode 50. Maybe quite possibly. He's working on it. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, but anyway, that's our show. Um, yeah. Lots of good stuff coming for WoW. It's on your phone. And it Hearthstone's is. on your phone. It's on your goddamn phone. My I'm life. playing way too much Hearthstone, though. It's not on uh, my it's, phone It's yet. over. Dude, my life is over. I'm going to get fired. <laughs> I'm going to have no friends. I'm gonna have have, John, we could be friends. We could be you Hearthstone could play Hearthstone friends. on their phones together. We, yeah. We could play <laughs> together while we're at work and get fired together. Here's the funny thing. When Dom comes down to see Avengers, I have a feeling you two are going to be sitting in the same room playing Hearthstone. Playing fucking Hearthstone with each other, yeah. No, 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 no. We're going to be playing Goldeneye. Oh, right, because we're going to do a Goldeneye challenge. Very excited for that. Right. That's but, soon. That's soon. And, and maybe Mario Party, too. Maybe Mario oh, Party. Why not? If, if one of you guys says Mario Party by then, because I've never played a Mario Party. I, 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 I might, I I might get up. Mario Party. I'm the one with the nine-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, I like my friends, so I don't think I'm going to get Mario Party. I, I have an amiibo I could use with it, too. <laughs> I got to get Toad. I, I got Toad. off track. <laughs> I got, got Toad. toad. I want to get towed. You know how he got towed? Stole it from a drifter. No, he texted me and told me to go to GameStop. <laughs> All the ones go, near him go. were sold out. I go, and a very helpful GameStop employee. I'm like, do you have any towed amiibos? I checked the shelves. They had Zeldas and Luigi's out the wazoo and Mario's and Yoshi's and all that stuff. And she go, I'm like, do you have any towed amiibos? And I quote, towed amiibos. Yes, one, possibly one towed amiibo. Yes. We have one in the back. Wait here. And then she just like scurried off into the back of the store and I'm just like... So like William Shatner took your order? Basically. Except William Shatner was a five foot two blue haired Asian lady. Huh. I mean, I went on GameStop and I looked and that Staten Island was the only one it's that a had limited a, supply. a low That's stock. That's so funny. So she comes out with a box. She goes, yep, my coworker marked it. It is a box with a picture of a toad drawn in Sharpie on it. Now, when I, I have a quick question before we close this show. When when you say a picture of a toad, do you mean like no, the picture, Mario toad? The or Mario toad? toad, yes. No, toad, his face okay. with the mushroom head and everything. I don't know why. No. I'm the one that asked you to go get a toad amiibo, and I know what the toad amiibo is, but when you told me this story before, I was picturing a frog on the box for some reason. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it was very well, well drawn toad too. That that coworker's got some skills. Yeah. Anyway, that's should have that. asked for the box too. Oh, I should have asked for the box. That would have been awesome. I wasn't thinking ahead. I'm sorry. I was just psyched that I got it. Anyway, John, where can they find you? You guys can find me at no more no more on Twitter. Yep, that way. It's there somewhere. Anyway. You can find me there on Twitter if you want to follow me. And I also have a Let's Play channel, and I've been actually doing all the Hearthstone uh, stuff, challenges, heroics, everything. Uh, that's at Nahajam on YouTube, and H O J M. Check it out. Because out of the three of us, he's probably the one who knows what he's talking about on Hearthstone. Dom, where can they find you? There. Yeah. Zista underscore. XIZTA with an underscore. You can also find us on YouTube slash Dead Zista for archives of all these videos as well as our Overwatch podcast and my Hearthstone heroic defeats. Uh, and you can follow the three of us on YouTube.com slash ASOTV podcast where we cover everything from Game of Thrones mm-hmm. to Daredevil. Game of Thrones, Daredevil, and everything in between. Mm hmm. 
Uh, I'm Mike. You can follow me on Twitter at Thiladrin, also on Twitch at Thiladrin. Um, the places he mentioned already. Uh, you can find us here on Twitch TV slash Zista every Tuesday night at 9.30 Eastern for Battle Talk. And if you would like to tweet us your questions, please do so. We are always happy to answer them. And thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Long transition, go! Wow, it's really long tonight. Thought I'd get another funny pose off. Typey, 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 typey. It was important. <laughs>